Wu Cheng, a recently graduated college student village official, traveled until the second year of the Chongzhen reign of the late Ming dynasty and became a military tycoon. The court was unruly, the emperor was incompetent, the officials and gentry were greedy, and the lives of the people were like grass mustard. He gradually pushed Wu Cheng onto the path of rebellion and uprising. Let's see how he fought against the wealthy, fought against the Ming dynasty, destroyed the Qin dynasty, and subverted the world, using a spark to turn the tide of history and rebuild Red China at the end of the Ming dynasty. Chapter 1 Hunger You are listening at NovelFull.audio Wu Cheng curled up in a shelter, with the cold ground still shrouded in yesterday's rain and early morning dew, wetting all his shoes, socks, and pants. When the early morning wind blew, it was bone chilling. But Wu Qing dared not make any slight movements, afraid of being discovered due to making noise. He could only endure the cold and hunger, endure the nauseating stench, and try to maintain his current position. With swollen and bloodshot eyes, he hid behind cover and quietly peered into the landlord's courtyard in the distance. It was said to be a bunker, but in fact, it was just a few messy and smelly graves. I don't know whose grave it was, but it was dug up by starving people, and even the bones were taken out by them to cook soup. Only these few graves were left, providing a hiding place for Wu Cheng and his colleagues. It's not big, it's dirty and smelly, but it's very safe. At least the few landlords and servants who yawn and watch for days and nights in the distance didn't notice them. Rubbing his slightly swollen, dark red bloodshot eyes, he felt hunger, fear, drowsiness, and cold. Waves hit, and Wu Cheng remembered the warm cabin and comfortable bed again. Unfortunately, he could only reminisce in his dream. Three days ago, Wu Cheng volunteered to become a college student village official and went to poverty alleviation in rural Guizhou. He just got in touch with a poverty alleviation teacher who was driving to pick him up, but on the way, he encountered a mudslide. In order to save a student who was washed away by the mudslide, he opened his eyes and arrived at this damn time. Daming, in the second year of Chongzhen. Wu Cheng traveled through time, not being an emperor, general, or a wealthy merchant, official, or gentry. He became a military household in Shangxi. Fortunately, he was not an ordinary military household like a slave. His body was relatively agile, and his swords and armor were complete. He could be considered one of the strongest and brave soldiers in the Shangxi Guard, which is why he was brought to this ghostly place to serve as the King of Diligence. In October of the second year of Chongzhen, the Khan of later Jin, Huang Taiji, personally led the elite of the Eight Banners and, under the guidance of Karachin, broke through the border walls from Daanku and Zifengku of the Jimiyong defense line and broke into the mainland. The Ming army responsible for defending Jimmy Yong closed their doors and even opened doors to offer cities and gone as internal agents of the enemy. Huang Taiji led the army commander to drive straight in, capture Zunhua, and approach the capital. The Ming court trembled and urgently called for the Guaning army to return to defend the capital. However, during the midst of the war, they suddenly lured the governor general of Jiliao, Yuan Chonghuan, to the point where the soldiers of Guaning were in danger. Zhu Dashou led his army to break through the Shanheguan Pass and escape to the north. Later, Manchu Gui died in battle, and generals such as Hei Yunlong and Ma Dengyun were captured alive. Almost all the wearable soldiers in the capital were annihilated. Chongzhen had no choice but to ask Yuan Chonghuan, who was in prison, to write a letter to appease Zhu Dashou while urgently ordering soldiers from all over to guard the capital. Shangxi Governor Gung Ruki and General Zhang Honggong were also ordered to lead 5,000 elite Shangxi King Qin. The original owner of this body naturally followed the army eastward until it was captured by Wu Qing three days ago. But he was lucky, at least he didn't have to suffer from hunger and discouragement like Wu Qing did for three whole days. The army of later Jin besieged the capital, burning, killing, and looting. The Qin Wang army and horses in the capital were countless, and the court could not afford money and food. The adults of the Ministry of War came up with a quick idea and used the excuse of meritorious orders. 
No grain is allowed on the first day of arrival, to first transfer these 5,000 Shangxi soldiers to Tongzhou, then to Changping, and then to Liangxiang. They did not receive grain for three days. People are iron, and food is steel. After three days without eating proper food, Wu Cheng was so hungry that his legs and feet were weak, and his eyes were shining with stars. When did Wu Cheng, who grew up in the new era, experience the pain of being hungry? I was extremely hungry and could only quietly leave the camp with a few military households, preparing to beg for some food from the nearby landlord's estate. There was a convulsion in his stomach, and stomach acid rushed straight into his throat. Wu Qing frowned and suppressed the feeling of nausea and vomiting, forcefully swallowing the poured gastric juice. The middle-aged man lying beside the grave heard the commotion and quietly rolled into the pit. He took out a few black beans from the cloth bag around his waist and stuffed them directly into Wu Cheng's mouth, saying, Kid, put something in your stomach, endure it. When those servants change shifts, we can slip in. Mian Zhengyu, the small flag of their team and a burly man in his forties, came to the landlord's house this time to beg for food, which was his idea. Wu Qing nodded and chewed a few times. These black beans tasted strange and nauseating, but his brain urged him to swallow all the bean residue in his mouth, giving his empty stomach some comfort. Another person rolled in from the grave and grinned, Uncle, give me some too. Mian Changha, Mian Zhengyu's own nephew, is just sixteen years old this year. Three big men squeezed into the narrow tomb pit, and Wu Cheng almost died. Mian Zhengyu also cursed softly, Fourth son, these are all life.saving things. You swallowed your appetite in one bite, so go and lie down in your pit. Mian Changha grinned foolishly again and complained, Tisk, uncle, you're just biased. Your nephew is hungry, but he gave him life.saving food to eat. Wu's son has just recovered from the epidemic and his body is still weak. Mian Zhengyu sighed and took out a few black beans from his bag. He hesitated for a moment, then pulled back half of them and stuffed the remaining four or five black beans into Mian Changha's hand. Save some food, this thing can only be pulled from donkey and horse feces. It's not much at all. Governor Gung and General Zhang still don't know if they can get food from the Ministry of War, and we have to rely on these beans to save lives. Wu Qing felt nauseous for a while, but still managed to resist the nausea and scraped off the bean residue between his teeth with his tongue, swallowing it into his stomach. Mian Change chuckled and stuffed one into his mouth, then carefully selected one to hide in his belt. The rest quietly slipped into Wu Cheng's empty rice bag around his waist. At this moment, the several wandering night servants not far away finally couldn't bear it and walked sparsely towards a row of flat houses next to the manor without waiting for the shift change to come. Hey Wu, as you said, this is indeed the time when people are most sleepy. Mian Zhengyu patted Wu Cheng's shoulder and climbed out of the grave first. Wu Cheng and Mian Changha followed closely behind, and other soldiers from the grave also climbed out. Seven or eight people met in front of a small slope. All right, everyone's listening. The little boy poked over during the day and climbed over the wall, which led to the kitchen of Zhuangzi. It was specifically designed to cook big pot rice for the servants in Zhuangzi. Mian Zhengyu half lay on the earthen slope and explained, We don't have much time. Let's take advantage of it before dawn and go inside to eat and drink for a while. We can take as much as we can, be careful not to cause trouble. Everyone agreed, and Mian Zhengyu nodded, leading the cat and running towards the landlord Zhuangzi. Wu Cheng tried hard to get up, but his hands and feet were weak and he almost fell to the ground. He was held by a long crane with quick eyes and hands, but he didn't fall to the ground. He couldn't help roast, oh, in this ghost era, all the landlord's dogs can eat, but soldiers have to be thieves to eat something. Those adults eat their own food, how can they still remember us Chiu Ba? Mian Changha chuckled and pulled Wu Qingqing to run. Let's go, why don't we open our stomachs and have a big meal tonight? Chapter 2 Stealing Chicken You are listening at novelfull.audio
In the darkness of winter, Wu Cheng and his companions ran all the way and quickly ran to the earthen wall of Zhuangzi. Everyone seemed to smell the tempting aroma of food, and their brains stimulated their empty stomachs time and time again, urging them to go and have a big feast. But Wu Cheng and others forced themselves to hold back, clinging tightly to the earthen wall, tightly grasping the steel knife at their waist. Mayan Zenjiu picked up a stone and threw it into the yard. These few of them left the camp without permission, and according to military law, they would lose their heads. Naturally, they were very careful and cautious to avoid being caught. If there were guards, servants, or watchdog dogs in the yard, they could only give up the delicious food and turn around to find another way. Fortunately, the god of fate seemed to be caring for them. After waiting for a while, the courtyard remained silent. It seemed that in this cold and freezing night, everyone and animals were immersed in their dreams. Mian Zhengyu took a deep breath, turned around and nodded to everyone. He used himself as a meat mat and had several people step on his back to flip over the wall. He then exerted force on his legs, grabbed the soil wall with both hands, and pushed himself over the wall with all his might. Everyone was tense all over, scanning around with their eyes nervously. After waiting for a while to make sure there was no one in the courtyard, they let out a low cheer and rushed towards the back kitchen in two or three steps, flipping through the window and searching around for food to feast on. Wu Qing went crazy with hunger and followed him into the kitchen. He searched for food in the darkness and found a cabbage. Regardless of whether it was clean or not, he picked it up and chewed heavily, not letting go of any residue that fell on the ground. He hurriedly picked it up and stuffed it into his mouth, chewing and swallowing it desperately. But cabbage couldn't solve the physiological hunger. A raw cabbage was inserted into his stomach, which had been without food for a long time. Instead, he screamed even more fiercely, and the convulsions made Wu Qing feel pain all over his body. Wu Qing breathed a slight sigh of relief and continued to explore. In a short while, he touched a piece of miscellaneous grain cake made of something unknown. He directly broke a large piece into his mouth, chewed it whole, and swallowed it into his stomach, choking his eyes and almost losing his breath. Wu Qing covered his mouth and coughed twice. Standing beside him, the long crane, who was wolfing down half of the leftover dough, heard the commotion and handed him his water bottle. Wu Qing didn't mind it being dirty, so he took a big gulp and rinsed down the cake residue stuck in his throat with clean water. He ate the cake like a whirlwind. With carbon water in his stomach, the hungry stomach finally rested for a while, and his brain took a break to start supplying energy to his body. Wu Cheng's perception and function gradually recovered. Wu Cheng slowly gasped for breath and continued to search for food. Vegetables and fruits were eaten directly, while most of the pancakes and steamed buns were eaten. The rest were all stored in grain bags. The army didn't know how long they would run out of food, so they had to rely on these crude foods to survive. While eating and pretending, Mian Zhengyu touched him and asked, Wu's son, fourth son, have you seen Mao? Mian Chang stuffed his mouth full of food and was too lazy to speak. He just shook his head and quickly swallowed the food in his mouth. Wu Qing replied, What's wrong? The hairy boy's gone. I've seen him before I went into the kitchen. Mian Zhengyu scratched his head, frowned, and cursed, This little rabbit will disappear soon. TSK, just don't make trouble. At this moment, a thin and small figure emerged from the window, waving at everyone while lowering his voice and saying, Boss Mian. Brothers, look what I've caught. The crowd gathered around, only to see the little boy holding a plump chicken with bright feathers, weighing several pounds. The little boy was tightly gripping his neck, struggling but unable to make a sound. Everyone's eyes lit up as a soldier urgently asked, This is an old hen laying eggs. Where did you get it from? There's a chicken coop in the yard, and when I was scouting during the day, I caught my eye. There was indeed a chicken inside, and I even touched a few eggs. The little boy raised the chicken and waved it, Boss Mian, how long haven't we tasted the meat? 
Let's give this fat chicken as a tooth offering for everyone. No way. Mian Zhengyu firmly refused, stealing some leftover food is enough. It's not cheap to raise such a fat laying hen. They will definitely trouble us. Let's walk quietly now, who knows? No one knows what they're doing, who are they causing trouble for? Long Crane's eyes dripped as he pulled Wu Qing over, who was gnawing on a piece of nest. Uncle, you also said that Qing Gu just survived the epidemic and his body is still weak. He needs to take care of himself. Uncle Wu saved your life under the bandits back then, and the family is just a single story. How can he explain to Uncle Wu when he's starving? A group of people all agreed and stared eagerly at the fat chicken, their eyes shining brightly like hungry wolves, making the chicken afraid to move. Mian Zhengyu glared fiercely at Mian Changha, then glanced at Wu Cheng and several of his colleagues with a disheveled expression. After hesitating and struggling for a while, he finally sighed and waved his hand as a gesture of agreement. Everyone was overjoyed and quickly packed up their food and ran away. They climbed out of the wall from the original path, but the servant who came to change shifts had not yet arrived. They quickly ran all the way back and ran away, panting and finding a half-collapsed thatched cottage. They found a shelter and started a fire with firewood stolen from the landlord's kitchen. Everyone took action together, killed and plucked the fat chicken, and grilled it on a makeshift grill. The eggs were also buried in a pile of firewood, and the meat aroma was overflowing, making everyone drool. Mian Changha couldn't help but reach out to pull the chicken leg, and was slapped back by Mian Zhengyu's paw, saying, it's not cooked yet. The raw meat has been eaten and diluted, and we don't have the money to seek medical treatment for you. Mian Change reluctantly withdrew his hand, his throat growling loudly, and he could only pick out a piece of cake to nibble on. After grilling for a while, Mian Zhengyu cut off the chicken legs with a small knife and handed them to Wu Cheng, who was also looking at him eagerly. Wu, you're weak. Let's eat them first. Wu Cheng hasn't seen any meat for a few days and has been hungry all along. How could he still be polite? Immediately grabbing the chicken legs and wolfing them down, my hands turned red and I couldn't care. This chicken leg is not seasoned, let alone compared to fried chicken like KFC in later generations, but Wu Qing felt that the deliciousness of the world was nothing more than that. He ate it clean in one breath, threw away the bones, and had to go with his colleagues to cut other pieces of chicken. Hey! Brother Cheng, were you born as a young master? How could you be so wasteful? Mian Changha picked up all the bones thrown by Wu Cheng, licked the oil on top clean, and then bit open the bones, sucking up all the bone marrow. Wu Cheng smiled awkwardly, holding a piece of chicken and tearing it apart. With some meat in his stomach, his brain and stomach finally stopped fussing, giving him some time to think. This is an era of being a jerk, and it will become more and more so in the future. I almost starved to death in just three days, but there is no improvement in the future. The invasion of the Qin dynasty, chaos among the people, rampant epidemics, and widespread famine the bloody road lay before me, where to go. Wu Cheng was at a loss in his heart, and could only take one step at a time, struggling to survive. Chapter 3 Mutations You are listening at NovelFull.audio a fat chicken is not enough for a few burly men to eat, but in just a few breaths, they even chewed their bones clean. Everyone only ate half full, licking the remaining oil on their lips, and headed towards the direction of the camp. The entire camp was as quiet as a cemetery, and the good hometown was not far from the battlefield in the capital region. However, the soldiers guarding the night were limp and swaying one by one. Wu Cheng and others quietly touched the gate of the camp before a small flag came over and lowered its voice, asking, Lao Mian. Where have you been patrolling the night? Have you brought back food? Mian Zhengyu chuckled and handed over a grain bag. The little flag quickly opened it, took out a cake and stuffed it into his mouth, saying with a hint of confusion, You have a conscience. It's not a waste for us to cover it up for you. However, as a member of our flag, 
we may not be able to feed you enough with just this little food. Save it, Governor Gung and General Zhang don't know if they can get food yet. Mian Zhengyu sighed and looked at the gradually rising sun in the distance. If we were to switch to other places like before, we wouldn't be able to get food for another day, and we would have to rely on these things to survive. The little flag nodded helplessly and cursed angrily, Dog Day, it's better to cat in Shangxi and be a diligent bird king. Silence. Mian Zhengyu hurriedly reminded him, then let out a slight sigh and patted his shoulder. The small flag cleared the way and shared the food with the soldiers under it. Everyone went back to the camp with Mian Zhengyu in the dark, quietly hiding their food bags in the tent. They took a big sip of water to deceive their half-full stomach and fell on the bed made of grass to rest. But Wu Qing couldn't sleep. A few days ago, he was struggling on the brink of death. His mind was filled with hunger, and now there was no risk of starvation. Instead, he was daydreaming. He did not have a background in history and only had a rough understanding of the late Ming dynasty. He only knew that in the end, Li Zicheng captured Beijing and was defeated by the Qing dynasty, taking over the world. As for the details of history, he had almost no knowledge, and history could not be used as a reference. He was confused about the future path. But he knew how cruel the end of the Ming dynasty was. As soon as he crossed over, he had already been beaten by reality, and the future of the Ming dynasty would be even more chaotic, cruel, and bloody. In his past life, he was just a college student who had just stepped out of an ivory tower, and now he is a military household with nothing and his parents dead. How can he survive in this chaotic world? Wu Qing stared at the top of the tent with bright red eyes, listening to the constant and thunderous snoring inside. His heart became even more frustrated, so he sat up, sighed, grabbed his clothes, and prepared to stroll around the camp to relax. At this moment, the tent door curtain was lifted by someone, and it was the small flag from before. Hey, what's wrong? Can't sleep. Wu Qing didn't know how to answer, so he could only give a clumsy salute based on what he had learned from other soldiers before. Fortunately, the little flag didn't come to find him either. He nodded as a gesture of gratitude and walked up to Mian Zhengyu, kicking him awake. Old Mian, get up, Governor Gung and General Zhang are back. Mian Zhengyu was about to curse when he suddenly woke up and jumped up. Why did you come back so fast? Did you come back with a grain cart? The grain truck is useless. The little flag cursed, don't talk about grain. Judging from their posture, we probably need to move camp again. Mian Zhengyu frowned and glanced at Wu Cheng, whose face was somewhat pale, muttering, Damn it, is the enlargement of the Ministry of War trying to force us to death? After four or five rounds of weak military drums, five thousand Shangxi soldiers reluctantly formed a formation on the school field. Gung Rookie looked angry and turned to look at Zhang Honggong beside him. However, Zhang Honggong snorted coldly, disregarding the hierarchy of civil and military officials and turning his head to ignore him. Gung Rookie felt guilty inside helplessly, forcing the soldiers to beat the drums repeatedly and urging them to line up. At this moment, a private soldier quickly ran onto the stage and whispered a few words in the ears of Zhang Honggong and Gung Rookie. Both of them had a change in expression, and Gung Rookie couldn't help but angrily said, General Zhang. You are not strict in governing the army, to the point where soldiers sneaked into the family of Bai Shangshu's in-laws to steal. Now that they come knocking, what should you do, my instructor? Zhang Honggong gritted his teeth and replied, Why did his family lose something and blame us for it? The crime of sneaking into the military camp and killing our heads, just spare his life and blow him out. Nonsense. Gung Rookie let out a low growl and sighed in a softer tone. General Zhang, we've been begging our grandparents for food these days. Where is the time to offend the Ministry of Revenue now? Moreover, soldiers sneaking out of the camp to steal are all due to the lack of food in the army. Can you produce food now? We may not be able to obtain food for a while. If we don't use knives to stabilize our morale, we may have the worry of mutiny. 
In my opinion, just bring out a few chill ba to take the blame and give them an explanation, which also intimidates the restless military morale. Zhang Hongdong clenched his lower lip, his eyes scanning back and forth over the five thousand soldiers. In the end, he could only sigh leisurely, anyway, someone, go invite the butler into the camp, catch the soldiers on duty last night and interrogate them in front of the army. Wu Cheng was mixed up in the chaotic military formation, watching Zhang Hongdong's personal soldiers suddenly break into the formation, binding the small flag and several guards under his command. They were taken to the front of the army, and a wooden stick was struck in their legs to force them to kneel. Then, a butler-like man stepped onto the stage with high toes and high spirits, saluted Gung Rookie and Zhang Hongdong, arrogantly pointing at them and cursing, mouthing, Chiu Ba, and, lowly household. Uncle Mian, are they taking the blame for us? Wu Cheng understood and turned his head to ask Mian Zhengyu, who was frowning beside him. Mian Zhengyu nodded and said, it's okay if they're not lucky. General Zhang sympathizes with the soldiers and can only curse and whip them a few times at most. Old Yu didn't show us his loyalty, so we'll distribute more food to them later. Everyone nodded, as expected, as Mian Zhengyu had said. The butler seemed tired of scolding and retreated to the side. Zhang Honggong walked forward, pointing to the few people and cursing a few words, asking his personal soldiers to read the military law, stripped off their tops and prepared to whip them. But at this moment, the situation suddenly changed. The butler suddenly jumped out and shouted loudly, General Zhang. Just let them go like this. Just whip them a few times. No way. The master has ordered them to march through the arrow camp. Send them to the master's estate for public display. The army was thunderous, and the so dot called arrow piercing camp refers to using arrows to pierce the ears of soldiers who have violated military laws, binding them to the streets for parade, stealing a chicken and some food and facing such severe punishment. The butler is clearly insulting the demonstration. Damn it, is this going to be serious? Mian Zhengyu spat and quietly pushed forward when everyone wasn't paying attention. Zhang Honggong's face turned red on the stage, but the butler was not afraid at all. He faced Zhang Honggong with his nose in the air. For a while, Gung Rookie reluctantly walked up and said a few words in Zhang Honggong's ear. Zhang Honggong was furious and turned his head, returning to the main account without looking back. Gung Rookie shook his head helplessly, waved his hand, and gestured for his own soldiers to follow suit. The small flag and soldiers immediately struggled and shouted, I'm wrong. At this moment, Mian Zhengyu suddenly stepped out of the military formation and his voice was thunderous. I did the chicken stealing thing. It has nothing to do with others. One person does it, one person is responsible. If you want to punish me alone, that's it. Chapter 4 Mutiny. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. At the moment Mian Zhengyu stepped out of the military formation, Wu Cheng felt something was not good. He quickly reached out and grabbed his sleeve, but was thrown away by him. He could only watch helplessly as he strode to the front of the stage, shouting, One person should do something, one person should do it. Oh my! Is Boss Mian going to die? Speaking of loyalty is not something we talk about at this time. The little boy stomped his feet anxiously, and Mian Changha was also anxious. With his head down, he rushed out and was stopped by his colleague beside him. Don't worry, take a look and let's talk. The stage was also stunned by this sudden change, and the personal soldiers holding the small flag and several soldiers looked at Gung Rookie in confusion. Gung Rookie stared at Mian Zhengyu with an ugly expression, while the butler, who was enjoying watching the play, frowned and looked at him. The theft was done by one person alone. Mian Zhengyu shouted again, his words extremely clear. Governor, brothers have not opened their food for three days and are really hungry. They stole some food to fill their stomachs. The villain is willing to be punished. No matter how much they lose, they will compensate according to the price, whether they are cows or horses. You compensate for it. 
the butler rushed forward and pointed at Mian Zhengyu, cursing, what you stole was an old hen laying eggs. Chickens lay eggs, eggs lay chickens, endless and priceless. You poor people can't afford to sell your lives. As he spoke, the butler pointed at the military formation and angrily cursed, if you don't open the food, why don't you go find the Ministry of War? If the Ministry of War doesn't give it, then you'll just be starving obediently. It's still reasonable to steal our things. You deserve to starve to death if you eat swill for your whole life. There was a commotion among the troops, and Gun Rookie saw the situation and quickly approached, saying, why should the butler get angry with a chill ba? After the arrow pierced camp, I personally took him to apologize to Wang Yuan Wai. The butler sneered and stared at Mian Zhengyu standing straight, saying, humph, how can such a good man who values loyalty be humiliated? Governor Gung, open the sword and ask for execution. The whole army was in a great uproar, and Gung Rookie also felt that this was too much. He frowned and said, Butler, some food is just a chicken, isn't it? The butler tilted his head and threatened with his nostrils facing upwards, Governor Gung, do you know how much the Lord Shangshu has been involved in your affairs? He vomited two or three times at the banquet. Now he's just asking you to deal with a stolen Xiu Ba. How could you refuse like this? All right. You need to protect this Xiu Ba. Let's go back and report to the Lord Shangshu now, and let's go and judge him. Gung Rookie was so angry that his face turned blue and he trembled all over. He glanced at the yellowed and skinny soldiers and the disheveled soldiers, and could only suppress his anger. He sighed helplessly and shouted, Okay. It's all up to you. Someone. Drag down this small flag and behead it. There was another loud commotion in the army, and even Gung Rookie's personal soldiers looked at each other, hesitating and unwilling to take action. Damn it, you're going to kill Mian Lauda for a chicken. The little boy panicked and looked incredulous. Damn it! How could there be such a truth? How could there be such a truth? Mian Changha also panicked and could only keep muttering, tears almost falling from his eyes. The soldiers around were all angry and indignant, but no one dared to speak up for Mian Zhengyu. In this era, there are differences in social status and people's lives are as cheap as grass. It's like a provincial governor killing a big soldier or a family for no reason, and there are many murders and threats in daily life. Although everyone is angry, no one dares to risk their lives to speak up. But Wu Qing dares. He is not a person of this era, he has not been bent by feudal ethics, hierarchy, and even more so, since he came to this world, he has relied solely on the care of Mian Zhengyu and his group to survive. Now, if we turn a blind eye to him, can he still be considered a person? Wu Cheng took a deep breath and squeezed out of the military formation, shouting, for the sake of a chicken, one's life must be taken. How could there be such a truth in this world? Mian Zhengyu was startled when he saw Wu Cheng emerge and quickly stopped, saying, shut up. Get back. How could you have the right to speak? Gun Rookie frowned on the stage and shouted, get down. Military orders are like mountains. What are you, dare you make noise here? Both of them had unpleasant words, but they were both looking for steps for Wu Cheng to prevent him from continuing to speak nonsense and angering the butler with a nose higher than the sky, thus wasting another life. But Wu Cheng completely spared no effort and continued to shout, Governor. We five thousand people, from the Prince of Qin in Shangxi province, are all loyal soldiers of the court. But what does the court do to us? First, we will be transferred to Tongzhou, then to Changping, and then to Yangxiang, without food for three days. The brothers are so hungry that they can't bear it anymore. They stole some leftover food to fill their stomachs, but because of this, they will lose their heads. Lord Gung, is the court going to starve us all? There was a commotion in the army, with some leading the way, and many brave soldiers also mixed in and shouted, questioning why the court did not provide food. Gung Rookie's face turned pale and blue, but he was guilty and could only shout, how can this little guard know when the court is working? 
step back quickly, otherwise I will punish you for making a noise in the military formation. Wu Qing gave a cold smile. He had already saved his life, so what is there to be afraid of? Taking a step forward and questioning, Governor, will the court issue us with grain today? Wu Qing saw it clearly. After three days of hunger, he ran around the capital again. The resentment in the army was already boiling, like a pile of gunpowder. A spark could ignite it, and a timely rain could extinguish it. Grain is Mars, grain is timely rain, but Gung Rookie has no rain in his hands, only fire. If someone's knife is about to hit their neck, then light a big fire and everyone can burn it to death together. How can Gung Rookie not understand this truth? He couldn't answer at all and could only grit his teeth and stare at Wu Qing fiercely. However, the more he remained silent, the more he confirmed the fact that he didn't open food today. Soldiers who were starving and angry all started making noise, and many even used various vulgar language to curse the court officials, which was extremely unpleasant. Wu Qing raised his hand to signal everyone to calm down, sneered, and added a touch of fire. Governor, if there is no food, then forget it. Is the court prepared today to let us guard elsewhere hungry? Gung Rookie still couldn't answer, and the Ministry of War did issue an order for them to mobilize troops to Fong Tai and continue circling around the capital. No one is a fool. Seeing Gung Rookie like this, who still understands the plan of the Ministry of War. Even a person with a good temper couldn't resist, pointing at Gung Rookie, who was cursing angrily, crying in grievances, and clamoring for food, causing chaos for a moment. The butler, seeing that the situation was not good, approached Gung Rookie and said with a strange tone, the good soldiers led by the governor. If we don't deal with such chaotic soldiers, are we waiting for a mutiny in the army? Gung Rookie's face was full of anger, and he was about to answer when suddenly a black shadow flashed by. Then a cold light flashed, and hot blood instantly splashed all over him. Gung Rookie remained in place, while Wu Cheng, holding a blood-dripping steel knife, did not look at him. He suppressed the urge to vomit, lifted the head of the person in the pool of blood, raised it high, and shouted with all his strength. We have come at the Emperor's command. After three days of empty hunger, even a small butler can command and take the lives of soldiers from the state of Wei. The court has treated us so well, even a bird king. We have dispersed. Go back to Shangxi. Go back to Shangxi. Chapter 5 Plan You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Gung Rookie was actually a civil servant. When he saw the butler being killed in front of him and bleeding all over the ground, Wu Cheng, holding his head and steel knife, roared wildly beside him. His legs suddenly softened and he fell to the ground. The soldiers who were stirred up by emotions saw Wu Qing killing the butler and Gun Rookie sitting on the ground, cheering one after another. The army formation dispersed in unison, each returning to their camp to clean up the loot. The cry of, return to Shangxi, shook the world, and Wu Cheng and Mian Changha also dragged Mian Zhengyu into the chaotic army, taking advantage of the chaos to escape from the camp. Zhang Honggong, who was sulking in the main tent, was shocked when he heard the shout. He hurriedly ran to the campus, only to see a mutiny in scattered soldiers. Gung Rookie sat on the ground staring at the butler's body, and a group of private soldiers surrounded him in confusion. Zhang Honggong let out a bitter smile and helped up Gung Rookie, who was covered in blood, saying, Old Gung, we still couldn't control it. The whole army mutinied, and now those guys from the Ministry of War have scapegoats. Gung Rookie's tears welled up as she shook her head and said, It's okay, it's okay. I've been begging my grandfather to tell my grandmother not to get a grain of grain these past few days. Didn't we guess this result earlier? We've been working hard for the court. In exchange for such a result, who should have ordered us to be diligent? Zhang Honggong let out a bitter smile again and said to the bewildered soldiers, let's all disperse. If there's anything you can take from the camp, take it all. Go back to Shangxi and live well. This court is not worth your lives here. Wu Cheng and others stopped running until they were panting heavily. 
As soon as they stopped, they remembered the butler in their hand and couldn't help but feel nauseous and trembling all over. This body is very functional, with quick reflexes and agile movements, but Wu Cheng is still a first-dot-time killer, feeling nauseous and panicked. Mayan Change leaned forward to help pat Wu Cheng's back and chuckled, Brother Cheng, you're weak and can't walk, right? I'll carry you on my back. Wu Cheng waved his hand and glanced up, only to find that besides their small flag, the small flag surnamed you also followed with people, and everyone looked at him with respectful eyes. Only Mian Zhengyu was a bit angry and broke down. He ran up and kicked Mian Changhe away, slapping the back of Wu Cheng's head and saying, Wu family brat. You've caused a big trouble. You're leading a mutiny, this is going to kill your head. It doesn't matter if I'm half buried in the ground. Your Wu family only has a solo biography of you. If you're killed, how can I deserve your father's life? Saving kindness. Wu Cheng touched the back of his head and said with a bitter smile, Uncle Mian, you have been kind to me. How can I watch you die? Besides, if it weren't for that aggressive bandit, how could this army mutiny? What Brother Wu said is reasonable. In the end, it's because the court is not kind. The small flag surnamed you leaned over and arched his hand. Lao Mian, this matter has come to an end. What's the use of blaming this monster? I'm under you Gong, Lao Mian, Brother Wu. You should be loyal, and we will be with you in the future. The soldiers of that flag all gathered together to show their loyalty. Wu Qing quickly returned the salute, and Mian Zhengyu gave a bitter smile and said, Old Yu, where is the time to do these fake things now? Let's discuss and decide where to go. Where else can we go? Why don't we just stay in the capital and wait for the Jin Yi Wei to come and catch people? Mian Chang has shouted, Anyway, I'm going back to Shangxi, at least there's still someone stuttering at home. Shut up, there's no place for you to talk. Mian Zhengyu scolded and then smiled bitterly, Lao Yu, what do you think? We ran away in a hurry. We didn't even take the food hidden in the camp, and we didn't have any gold or silver on us. We'll have to starve to death halfway back to Shangxi for thousands of miles. Yu Gong frowned but didn't reply. He asked Wu Cheng beside him, Brother Wu, what's your idea? After hesitating for a moment, Wu Cheng replied, Uncle Mian was right. To go back to Shangxi, we must prepare some food. If we go back to the camp, we will just fall into a trap. We can only find this food from elsewhere. Wu Qing gritted his teeth and his gaze turned cold. Let's go back to that village and borrow grain and silver from the landlord. Mian Zhengyu was startled and hurriedly stopped, no way. We're soldiers. Stealing some food was a last resort, but running to someone else's place to borrow food and silver in the daytime would make you a bandit. No way. No way. Yu Gong smiled slightly and agreed, Lao Mian, I think the Wu brothers have a great strategy. Let's fight and kill for the country, protect their safety, and let them provide some money and food. What's the point? Besides, how can we go back to Shangxi if we don't borrow from them? As you said, leading a mutiny is a crime of beheading. If we stay in the capital, we will have a dead end. Going back to Shangxi, the court is currently in a state of great anxiety. Maybe we will let it go lightly like before. Mian Zhengyu remained silent, and what Yu Gong referred to as, before, referred to the rebellion of the Qin Wang army in Yensui town. The Yensui general embezzled grain, extorted soldiers, and sold military horses privately, which caused strong dissatisfaction among the soldiers. Many people mutinied and left the camp. The governor of Yensui, Zhang Mengjing, died of fear and anger, but the court could only let it go. Mian Changhe chuckled and leaned in to help, Uncle, I think it's good too. If it weren't for the landlord's dog's aggressive pressure today, how could we have been so embarrassed and carried this black pot? Ask him for some money and food, beat him up, and we'll also vent our anger. Mian Zhengyu glared at him and glanced at Wu Cheng and Yu Gong. Both of them nodded slightly and glanced at the yellowed, skinny, 
and eager soldiers. He let out a long sigh and said, It's okay. It's okay. We've already caused such a big disaster, so we don't care if we cause any more. The village where the landlord is located is only a short distance from the camp, but most of the Shangxi soldiers who mutinied are still tidying up and looting near the camp. It has not yet affected this area, and the village has not received any news of the Shangxi soldiers mutinied, so there is no defense. Wu Cheng and others were busy running for their lives, running a long distance in one breath. Now that the plan had been decided, they headed straight towards the village. There was no alertness in the village, and a peaceful scene seemed to have nothing to do with the war in the capital and the large army stationed nearby. Seeing the evil-looking Chioba enter the village, the villagers who were farming took refuge. The once bustling village was temporarily closed, and for a moment, no one could even be seen on the streets. Wu Cheng was speechless for a moment. His own people were so afraid of his own army and soldiers. How could this country not be defeated? In no time, an old man led a group of strong slaves to surround him. The strong slaves were all strong, each wielding a knife, and even had two three-eyed guns in their hands. Compared with themselves, who were thin and yellow-faced, it was difficult to distinguish between soldiers and civilians. How many military officials are Shangxi soldiers stationed in Liangxiang? What's the matter? The old man was quite polite and approached, asking, I am the leader of this village. You can tell me anything you want. Yu Gong and Wu Cheng exchanged a glance and brought the bound Mayan Zhenjiu forward. Li Zheng, this thief is the thief who stole the property of the Wang family. General Zhang sent us to bring him over and deliver him to the Wang family. General Zhang said that this thief has committed a heinous crime and is at the disposal of the Wang family. Could you please lead us into the Wang family to take on our mission? Chapter 6 Borrowing Grain You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the chaotic era of the late Ming dynasty, the capital region was also unsafe. The landlord's estate was built like a small castle, with numerous watchtowers and strong servants. If Wu Cheng and his companions were to launch a strong attack, they would definitely be killed. So Wu Cheng came up with this strategy and entered the manor under the pretext of escorting Mian Zhengyu, and then erupted into rebellion. There was indeed a trap there, and squinting his eyes, he looked up and down at Mian Zhengyu for a while and asked, This soldier, why didn't the steward Wang come back with you? Wang, the butler, is still in the camp. Governor Gung asked him to explain some things and sent us the bandits first. Wu Qing chuckled and said in a low voice, Governor Gung left Wang to complain. The military did not provide food for three days, and the morale of the army was fluctuating. Governor Gung wanted Wang to help plead with Wang and see if he could help talk to the minister. Anyway, let's release some food first. Otherwise, if the military's morale is unstable, there may be bandits disturbing the people in the village. Li Jing nodded and sighed, this little soldier doesn't know. Nowadays, there are wars everywhere and the national treasury is difficult. Even if Wang Yuanwei goes to talk to the minister, the court may not be able to do anything about it. As he spoke, he shook his head and said, forget it, let's not talk about this. The soldiers will hand over this thief to me, so please return on your own. How could that be? Wu Cheng's acting skills were superb, and he quickly waved his hands and said, We have received military orders, and we must hand over this scumbag to Wang Yuanwei. If we just leave like this, we may be beheaded by General Zhang when we go back. Li Zheng sneered and asked, How many military officials want to see Mr. Wang? I'm afraid it's not just for the purpose of paying their respects, is it? Wu Cheng was taken aback for a moment and scratched the back of his head, saying, Li Zhenghui, I'm not hiding from you either. The Ministry of War has not given us food for three days, and we've all been hungry for three days. General Zhang sympathizes with the soldiers and sent us a few thieves over just to make Wang Yuanwei happy. Maybe he can reward us with some leftover food to fill our stomachs. Li Zheng frowned and looked at Wu Cheng and others, each with a disheveled expression. 
several of them were pale and emaciated, with their feet floating. He sighed slightly and waved, well, you Shangxi soldiers came from afar to fight against the Tartars, but you were starving for three days. It's really pitiful. Follow me and take you to see Wang Yuanwei. Whether you have anything to eat depends on Wang Yuanwei's mood. Everyone was overjoyed and followed Li Zheng towards Zhuangzi. Zhuangzi had already received a notification and saw Li Zheng leading Wu Cheng and others over. The door opened a crack, and a domestic servant crawled out. They chatted for a while, glanced at Wu Cheng and others sideways, and then crawled back. In no time, the door opened halfway and the servant crawled out again. You guys, Chiu Ba, are lucky. A few refugees and young girls have just entered the mansion, and they have served the officials happily. They agreed to meet you guys, Chiu Ba. Wu Cheng and his companions cheered and escorted Mayan Zenjiu into the village. As they entered the lobby, they saw a chubby, greasy and disgusting man sitting in the main seat, teasing a yellow dog with a piece of lamb. Seeing everyone enter, the fat man squinted his eyes and looked at Mian Zhengyu who was tied up. He chuckled and said, look at your physique and appearance, you don't look like a petty gentleman. Why did you come to my master's house to steal things? Mian Zhengyu was a bit indignant and straightened his waist, saying, I haven't had anything to eat in three days. I stole some of your food, a hen, and just returned it to me. Why bother forcing each other so hard? The chubby man chuckled and gritted his teeth, saying, You see, we usually feed our dogs with lamb, and I don't think it's a shame to throw away the leftovers and cold food that servants eat. But who doesn't know the name of our Wang family in this good rural area? You stole it into my house. If I don't deal with you, how will I face the parents and fellow villagers in this good rural area? Wait, I've prepared all the boards. I'll treat you to bamboo shoots and stir-fried meat later until you're full." The chubby man sneered and turned his head to look at Wu Cheng and others. You guys, Chiu Ba, insist on meeting me, just to beg for a bite. Wu Cheng and his companions quickly nodded, and the chubby man laughed heartily again. He threw a piece of lamb in his hand that had been bitten by a yellow dog in front of the others, saying, I have a kind heart, and I won't let anyone go hungry. This lamb was brought from outside the border, and you won't be able to eat it in your lifetime. I'll give it to you and eat it here before leaving. Wu Cheng's anger surged in his heart. He understood why this guy was so easy and nodded in agreement with them. Emotion was treating them like clowns, specifically used to play and have fun. Wu Cheng gritted his teeth and took a few steps forward with a flattering expression. He arched his hand and said, Sir, in fact, General Zhang has summoned the young people here. Apart from escorting the criminals, there is one more matter that needs to be discussed with the officials. The fat man frowned, snorted impatiently, and waved his hand to signal Wu Cheng to continue speaking. Wang Yuanwei, we are here to borrow food from you. Wu Cheng sneered coldly and suddenly pulled out his sword to knock over a servant beside him. Yu Gong and others also became violent, drawing knives to indiscriminately chop down the armed servant Ding Zhuang. Mian Zhengyu broke free from the knot on the rope, took the waste knife thrown by Yu Gong, and headed straight for the fat man. However, a burly servant who was guarding the fat man reacted quickly and shouted, Take the master with you. He drew his sword and joined forces with Mian Zhengyu. Damn it! Wu Qing cursed angrily. If that chubby guy escaped, they all had to explain themselves here today and rushed towards his position. Fortunately, the servant was frightened by this sudden change and still sat dumbfounded in the main seat before he could react. The servant next to him wanted to pick him up and run away, but he was too fat. Two or three sturdy servants didn't even lift him up. The servant saw the situation and forced Mian Zhengyu open with a knife. He turned around and slashed at Wu Cheng, who then used his sword to block him. However, he was in a state of half-hunger and was fighting for the first time, and his momentum weakened a bit. The steel knife collided and made a clang sound. Wu Cheng's hand softened, and his waist knife was cut off by the servant. 
Ding Yishi then slashed Wu Cheng's neck with a knife. Wu Cheng had no choice but to avoid it, and as he was about to strike hard, he heard a bang sound. Countless lead particles flew towards him, leaving the servant's back bruised with blood and flesh. His kinetic energy made him stumble and his sword swing slowed down. Wu Cheng quickly rolled to the ground and dodged. At the same time, Mian Zhengyu rushed forward and slashed his head with a diagonal slash, causing blood to gush out and drench Wu Cheng's entire body. Seeing that the servant had been killed, the remaining servants and servants shouted in disorder, Master Lin is dead, and dispersed in unison. In no time, they managed to escape cleanly, but not far away. They all gathered outside the hall to observe the situation. In this lobby, there are only Wu Cheng and others, as well as the scattered corpses, and the fat man who is trembling with fear. Chapter 7 Robbery You are listening at NovelFull.audio Cheng, are you okay? The little boy ran up with the three-eyed gun he had picked up, curling his lips. This thing sounds loud, but its power is too weak. It can't kill people at such a close distance. Mian Zhengyu slapped him on the head and said, what are you fooling around with? What should you do if you hit your own person? This lead is poisonous when it enters the flesh, and if the wound rots, you won't be able to save it. The furry boy shrunk his neck and retorted, I also aimed to save Chinggu. I aimed and won't miss. I don't mind, you did a good job, Mao. Wu Qing smiled and got up, wiping the blood from his face. He glanced at the servants and servants outside the hall who dared not come in. It is a group of ordinary people who have never seen blood before. Although their bodies are stronger than most of them and they are numerous, they are scared out of their wits in the battle of life and death. After losing their backbone, they no longer have the courage to confront these bloodstained soldiers. Wu Qing breathed a sigh of relief, but fortunately everything went smoothly without any danger. Looking back at the fat man sitting on the ground with a frightened face, Wu Cheng walked forward with a chuckle and said warmly, Wang Yuan Wai, you said that we big-headed soldiers are ordered to fight against the eastern invaders and ensure your safety. It's not excessive to borrow some food from you, right? The chubby man didn't answer, his whole body trembling in his voice hoarse as he threatened, How dare you plunder the people? I, I am related by marriage to the Minister of Revenue, and you. You Chiu Ba, are you not afraid of death? Anyway, we all have to die. It's better to be a starving ghost than a starving ghost. Wu Qing sneered and waved his hand. Long Crane came up and picked up the fat man's collar, pressing his hand on the table. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm a relative of the Minister of Revenue. You can't hurt me. The chubby man screamed in horror struggling desperately. However, Wu Qing ignored his cries and slashed at his fat hand with a knife. The chubby man let out a scream, his pants got wet, and soon there were bursts of urine smell, tears and runny nose all flowing down. But Wu Qing Zhen didn't actually hit him. The knife chopped on the table and almost pierced through the wooden table, saying, Oh, it's crooked. Mr. Wang, you see, we're so hungry that we can't even cut it in the right place. The next knife might probably cut your head. The fat man was completely paralyzed by fear and quickly shouted, No, 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 no. I'll give you whatever you want. I'll give you whatever you want. Wu Qing looked up and smiled at the crowd, then Long Crane lifted him up and said, Take us to your granary. We don't need much as long as we can go back to Shangxi. There's more silver. Wu Qing saw Mian Changhe so sincere, speechless for a moment, and immediately added, Could you please lend us some silver, Mr. Wang? You know, in today's world, it's difficult to move without money. How dare the fat man resist? He hurriedly and hoarsely ordered the servants outside to prepare food and silver. At this moment, Li Zheng, who had just escaped from the lobby, trembled and returned with a long bow. Military lords, just take whatever you want. Please don't harm the lives of the villagers anymore. Wu Qing sighed. 
there was still some conscience in this place. If it weren't for his help, his group would have caused a lot of trouble to see Wang Yuan Wai. Immediately and politely, he arched his hand and comforted, I'm at ease. We really just want some silver and grain to go back to Shangxi. There was no intention of hurting anyone, so we took the silver and grain and left. There, he was looking down at the corpse on the ground with a hint of, I believe you're a ghost, expression, but he didn't dare to say it. He could only reluctantly say, this is good, this is good. Yu Gong picked a few people to accompany the domestic slaves to move grain and gold and silver, and the little boy also followed. After a while, he ran back with an excited face and said, Brother Cheng. Brother Cheng. You don't know how much food this fat guy has in his house, there are several granaries. They are enough for our entire army to eat for a week or two. Wu Ching frowned and patted the chubby man's cheek with a knife. Wang Yuan Wai, why do you keep hoarding so much food? I heard that the northern region has been hit by disasters this year, with many prefectures and counties having no harvest. How did you get so much food? To be honest, otherwise I'll chop your hands. The fat man was so scared by the steel knife that tears welled up in his eyes. He quickly replied honestly, Master Jun, they are all stored grain in the reserve warehouse. I also bought it with money through the relationship of the Minister of Revenue. I will wait for the Tartars to step back and do some small business to earn some money. Wu Ching almost became angry. My goodness, the national treasury is so empty that even the food and salaries of the loyal royal army cannot be paid, making them starve for three days in vain. The food stored by the emotional court has been sold privately to these local tyrants and evil gentry, afraid that they won't wait until after the war. Now that the loyal royal army is constantly going to the capital, where can the court provide them with the food? I'm afraid we'll have to spend a lot of money to buy back our own grain reserves from these local tyrants and evil gentry. As soon as they entered and exited, these local tyrants and evil gentry naturally made a lot of money, and the officials from all over the capital didn't know how much they had made. What suffered were these loyal and loyal military households and the scattered people. Wu Ching gritted his teeth and fiercely smashed the fat man's head with the back of his knife, cursing, you idiot, Dong Lu is now burning, killing, and looting around the capital. Sooner or later, they will come to the good countryside. Without us protecting you all, you can make a lot of money by hoarding so much food. In the end, you didn't get Dong Lu for nothing. You stupid enemy capitalist. The chubby man didn't dare to retaliate, so he gritted his teeth and tearfully replied with a flattering expression, Lord Jun, I was confused for a while. Now I understand that all those grains will be given to Lord Jun, and you can take them away. Wu Cheng was too lazy to talk nonsense to him, and after a few more blows to vent his anger, he turned around and said to the trembling Li Zheng who had always stayed in the hall, Li Zheng, these grains should have been plundered from the village, and we can't take much with us. It's better to distribute them to the villagers as compensation for disturbing the countryside. Li Zheng, however, shook his head with a bitter smile and gave a glance to the fat man, saying, the military lord takes his own share. Even if the villagers take so much food, how can they keep it? Wu Qing fell silent for a moment, and he understood the meaning of Li Jing very clearly. Compared to these local tyrants and evil gentry, court officials, and the later Jin army surrounding the capital, these villagers were too weak. Sharing the food was actually a crime, and they couldn't keep it, and there was also a concern for their lives. Wu Qing couldn't stay here to protect them, so he could only let out a long sigh and nodded helplessly, not bringing up the topic anymore. Yu Gong and his companions brought a cart and stacked several bags of grain on it, enough for them to eat half of the way and throw half away. When they returned to Shangxi, they could still sell it. Wu Qing calculated and when the slaves brought the silver, he asked Mian Changha to hold the fat man as a hostage and also ordered a pack horse to pull the cart and prepare to run away. At this moment, a black smoke suddenly rose in the distance, and a servant ran over in a panic. Not good. Not good. The Shangxi soldiers mutinied, and the chaotic soldiers burned and killed in the village. 
Chapter 8 Robbery You are listening at NovelFull.audio The family slave ran all the way to the lobby, shouting and suddenly saw Wu Cheng and others. He was like a big goose choked on his neck, his face turning red and unable to say a word. The people inside and outside the hall were all shocked, their faces full of anxiety. They quickly stepped forward and grabbed Wu Cheng's sleeve, saying, Lord Jun, you promised not to harm anyone again. Why? Wu Cheng didn't know how to answer, could it be said that they were two groups of people, and the chaotic army looting outside had nothing to do with them. But he caused the Shangxi army mutiny, and he is the main culprit. It is obvious that the mutinous Shangxi soldiers have begun to flee the camp, looting and killing in various parts of Liangxiang. Wu Cheng took a rough breath and looked at the anxious Li Zhang and the panicked slave villagers. His heart couldn't calm down, and he sighed. He shook off Li Zhang's hand and walked towards the fat man tied with hemp rope, slashing at his neck with a fierce knife. A few times before, Wu Qingcheng had a subconscious reaction in an emergency. Now, when he consciously killed someone, Wu Cheng was actually weak and his hands and feet were weak. The knife went into the fat man's neck, but did not cut it off with a single blow. Instead, it got stuck in the middle of the bone. Wu Qing forcefully pulled it out twice before pulling it out, and then slashed it fiercely, splattering blood all over his body before cutting off the fat man's head. With trembling hands, he lifted the fat man's head, panting heavily, and said to Li Zheng, who was so scared that he fell to the ground, Li Zheng, believe me again. I can't protect your village, but I can try my best to keep your villagers safe. After speaking, Mian Changha, who was standing there in a daze, tied Li Zheng up and threw him onto the cart. Yu Gong led the people to find more carts and bring more grain from the granary. Mian Zhengyu muttered a few words to him, frowning and sighing. He led the furry boy and others to use knives to intimidate the slaves and drove all the landlord's women to the lobby, where they also sat on the cart. Wu Qing glanced at the crying female relatives and the corpses on the ground, shouting at the servants, let's all scatter. Stay here and wait for the rebels to kill you. After shouting, he ignored them and got on the scooter to drive the horses. A small convoy swaggered out of the mansion and headed towards the direction of black smoke rising along the main road. That place was like a hell on earth with dozens of starving soldiers rushing into the village and smashing open houses, regardless of gender, age, or age. They rummaged through boxes and cabinets, searching for food and silver coins, stuffing them into their mouths. Silver coins, copper coins, and even waste paper were all stored in their wallets. After finishing the robbery, they set fire to the house and laughed heartily as they watched the flames rise. Some soldiers, who were full of food and drink, even started playing games and climbed up high to shoot and kill the fleeing villagers from afar with bows and arrows. These soldiers, full of resentment, were blinded by anger and hunger and turned into bloodthirsty beasts, venting their frustrations on the unarmed people. Happy. I've been a chiu ba all my life. When did I ever feel so happy like this? Several Shangxi soldiers dressed in Mandarin duck jackets emerged from a house, with steel knives dripping with blood, oil and food residue left at the corners of their mouths, and their backs packed with packages. It's still Qian Lauda's good idea. A soldier approached and laughed heartily, go to the damn Liangxiang County. The county has a city wall, and there are many strong people in the city. Those officials don't even give us food. Can they open the door for us to enter the city? If we can't deceive them, how can we, a bunch of hungry soldiers who have been hungry for three days, attack this Liangxiang county? The soldier surnamed Xian was shooting and killing the fleeing civilians with his bow and arrow, and when he heard this, he laughed and turned his head, saying, that's right. Lin Baihu had a bad brain when he led his troops to attack Liangxiang county. Why should we die with him? Even if we do, what can so many people get? If we don't just borrow food and pay from these villages, wouldn't we be at ease? The soldiers burst into laughter, but at this moment, a convoy came from afar. 
the soldiers were overjoyed and quickly drew their swords and bows to surround them. As they approached, the soldier surnamed Xian was taken aback and greeted, Hey, Mian Xiaoqi, where did you get rich? Why did you get so much grain, gold, and silver? Wu Cheng and others were like Nouveau Riche, with gold, silver, grain, cloth, porcelain, furniture, and clothing piled up on the carts, making it clear to these chaotic soldiers. In addition to gold, silver, and grain, there were also crying female relatives who were tied up and sitting in the carts. These female relatives were usually well cared for, very different from the women in ordinary households. Their skin was delicate and white, their figures were graceful and graceful, and their appearance was beautiful and charming. Now, when they cried, they looked even more pitiful, and saw the chaos of these chaotic soldiers. Mian Zhengyu looked embarrassed and didn't respond. Wu Qing jumped out of the car and arched his hand, saying, How many brothers have also come to become rich? Since they are rich, why borrow things from poor people here instead of borrowing from the landlord's courtyard? The soldier surnamed Xian chuckled and said, You're joking, little brother. The landlord's mansion is full of watchtowers. How can we, these dozens of hungry soldiers, break through? Wu Cheng laughed heartily and waved at the convoy. Yu Gong threw the head of the landlord to him and said, The landlord's estate has already been broken by us. Otherwise, where did we get so much grain, gold and silver, and beauty? There is still a lot of grain and gold and silver in that estate that we can't move. Brothers, hurry up and don't let the troublemakers in the village take them away. Are you serious? The chaotic army was overjoyed and looked at the grain and gold and silver on the convoy. They immediately bowed and said, since that's the case, let's not bother our brothers anymore. See you in Shangxi if we have a chance in the future. Wu Qing nodded with a smile as he watched them leave. His face changed and he climbed onto a cart. The convoy continued on until it reached the village entrance. Wu Cheng and others released Li Zhang and his female relatives, and Wu Cheng personally untied Li Zhang. Li Zhang, we really had no choice but to make this decision. Those chaotic troops should have been fighting in the village for a while. Please take these female relatives and villagers with you to leave the village for now. We will only bring a car and gold and silver, and leave all the other food and cloth for you. There he sighed and nodded, the bandits are like combs, the soldiers are like casters. The villages, big and small, near this good town are likely to be plagued by war. Where are we going to avoid? Anyway, you still have a conscience. If the old man is lucky enough to survive, the Minister of Revenue will pursue him one day, and he will push the murder onto other chaotic soldiers. It can be considered as a reward for your protection. Wu Qing nodded, and the two teams parted ways. The hairy boy drove the carriage, and everyone headed towards the west. The cries in the village are still clear and audible, and several corpses can be seen from time to time outside the village. A seven or eight year old female doll is lying on the roadside, with her headless body half lying in the field and half resting on the roadside. Her small head rolls aside, staring blankly at the crowd heading west. Mian Zhengyu let out a long sigh and finally couldn't help but murmur, Alas, what a sin. Wu Qing felt an unnamed anger in his heart and roared loudly, What can I do? I'm not trying to save my life. Damn it, tell me what to do. Ah. Chapter 9 Immortal Realm You are listening at NovelFull.audio The moon hung high in the sky early, and the piercing cold wind blew like a ghost, penetrating every crevice. Wu Qing sat under a withered tree, sheltering himself from the cold wine through the trunk, roasting himself with the fire in front of him. He was wrapped in a fur coat he had snatched from the landlord's house, trembling all over, and tears and runny nose couldn't help flowing down. Mian Changha walked over with a bowl of chicken soup and said, Cheng, let's have something to eat. You just recovered from a serious illness. If you fall ill again, you won't be able to save yourself. Wu Qing nodded, took the chicken soup, and started drinking it. 
He drank the warm chicken soup and felt his whole body warm up. He took a few sips and finished his meal, then picked up the chicken from the bowl and started nibbling on it. Ah, how can you form this bad habit and waste food after getting well? Mian Chanha roast, picked up the chicken bones thrown by Wu Cheng, put them into his mouth and chewed them. After hesitating for a while, he advised. Brother Cheng, I didn't blame you. We all know that you had to instigate the army to change. It's not your fault that those disorderly soldiers harm the people. This chicken soup was sent to me by my uncle. Wu Ching nodded, wiped his nose and tears with his sleeve, and sighed, I'm not angry with Uncle Mian, I'm angry with someone else. Uncle Mian doesn't have to worry about it. I'll calm down and apologize to him later. Uncle is not someone who holds grudges. If you eat and drink well, he will be satisfied. Long Crane waved his oily hand and picked out a bone to stuff into his mouth. What are you angry about? Tell me, uncle has said that if you hold your breath in your heart, it will make you feel good. Wu Ching remained silent, and Mian Changha remained silent. The two of them sat quietly for a while, but Wu Ching let out a long sigh and nodded, Ah see, you know I was unconscious from an epidemic for a few days before, but in fact, I went to the fairy world that few days ago. Immortal Realm Mian Changha became interested and sat up, half lying down, grinning and waiting to listen to the story. Wu Ching nodded and organized his words. That is indeed the fairyland. There is no war there. The army will not plunder or kill people, nor bully the people. They often provide disaster relief and help the people. Hey, I heard from Baihu that the Qi family army was like this back then. They didn't take the people's gold and silver, didn't demolish their houses, and often helped the people. Mian Chanha pouted and tried to recall, why didn't it disappear later? Oh, it seems like during the Wanli period, there was a pay mutiny in Liaodong, and they were killed completely. There won't be such soldiers again in the future. The army there is even worse than the Qi family's army. Wu Qing said decisively, military households like us, after joining the army, have a glorious family, with treatment for injuries and illnesses, compensation for deaths in battle, sufficient salaries, and no need to go hungry. Our families can also benefit from it, and during the farming season, the government arranges people to help us. If that's the case, it's really a fairy's life. Mian Chanha grinned again, but his tone didn't quite believe it. Wu Qing didn't pay much attention and continued to recall, the people there didn't have to go hungry either. No matter how good or bad the food was, there would always be a full meal to eat. Many people have never been hungry since childhood, and extravagance and waste have become a habit. Even the court had to issue special documents to encourage the people to save food. Wu Cheng learned from the appearance of a long crane, picked up a chicken bone and put it in his mouth to suck and chew, saying, not to mention chicken, it's just beef, lamb, and fish. If you want to eat it, you can eat it. Many people get tired of eating big fish and meat, so they go eat those wild vegetables and miscellaneous grains. How can I get tired of eating meat? I'm willing to eat meat every day and eat meat every meal. Mian Changha couldn't help but interrupt Wu Cheng's words, I don't like to eat wild vegetables and miscellaneous grains. The harvest has been poor in recent years, and my family really can't help but prepare some. Wu Qing let out a helpless bitter smile and didn't know how to answer. He simply avoided talking and said, anyway, people there can't be hungry. If there's nothing else they can do, they can still seek help from the court. There will always be a bite to eat. Don't worry about food, don't worry about clothing, this fairy world is really a good place. A hint of envy shone in Mian Chang's eyes, and quickly disappeared. Wu Qing nodded and sighed again, but as soon as I opened my eyes, I came. Back here, struggling daily on the brink of starvation, and having to kill and plunder. I had to be worried and protect my head. Ah see, do you think I can never go to the fairy world again? Mian Chang shrugged and advised, Brother Cheng, I can't explain the big truth, but I used to listen to the opera singing before, and since we come here, 
we can rest assured. Now that we are in this situation, naturally we should focus on the things in front of us and live each day well. If we have fate, we can still go to the immortal realm sooner or later. Once you come, let's settle down. Wu Ching smiled slightly and patted Long Crane's shoulder. Ah see, you're right. Since you're in this era, it's no use thinking about anything else. A few days ago, I was hungry, and all I wanted was to have a full meal. These days, my stomach has been full, but I couldn't help but think about it. Ah see, thank you for helping me clarify. Huh, Brother Cheng, you are the only one in our hundred households who has been enlightened. You scholars just like to daydream, unlike me, a rough guy who only knows how to eat and sleep when you're full. Mian Changha laughed heartily, causing Wu Cheng to laugh along. Mian Zhengyu, who was talking to Yu Gong in the distance, turned his head to look over and smiled, then turned his head to continue boasting. After laughing for a while, the long crane licked its lips and asked, Brother Cheng, you said that the fairyland is so good, isn't there no more poor people? Wu Cheng was stunned for a moment and replied, Yes, but they are so poor that they are different from us. They don't worry about food and clothing, but rather about poor living conditions, inability to earn money, and no place to go to school. We may never worry about what they are worried about for the rest of our lives. Wu Cheng took a deep breath and touched his chest, which was where the village official's appointment letter was placed before he crossed the border. But just a few decades ago, they were even poorer, like us, they couldn't eat enough and didn't cover their clothes. Not only were they, but most people in the entire immortal world, like us, were worried about a full meal. However, in just a few decades, most people no longer worry about their stomachs, but instead worry about what to eat today. In just a few decades, they have fed over a billion people, and no country, ancient or modern, has been able to do so. Wu Cheng's eyes were bright, and he didn't care about the bewildered expression on his face. He muttered to himself, why is that so? Because there are always people who work hard, those who work hard, those who plead for the people, and those who sacrifice themselves for justice. Wu Ching turned his head and smiled brightly, ah see, I want to be someone like this. I want to be in the immortal realm, and I want to be here too. Oh, Maybe I can use my whole life to build this place into the immortal realm. I don't understand. Mayan Change waved his hand and picked up a chicken bone, throwing it into his mouth. Brother Cheng, you're smarter than me since you were young. You can do whatever you want, and I'll be with you. Wu Cheng nodded solemnly and took a deep breath, then let's go down together. Chapter 10 Snowy Night you are listening at NovelFull.audio. In the second year of Chongzhen, the Qinwang army of Shangxi was deprived of food for three days. The entire army mutinied, plundered good villages, scattered and fled back to Shangxi. The court was shaken, and Emperor Chongzhen was enraged. He ordered the arrest and imprisonment of Shangxi Governor Gung Ruki and Shangxi General Zhang Honggong under the pretext of dereliction of duty and inability to restrain the army. As for those officials who did not provide food for three days, none of them were punished. But these have nothing to do with Wu Cheng and others. When the chaotic soldiers in Shangxi plundered the Liangxiang area and slaughtered the people, they had already embarked on the road back to Shangxi with a full load of grain. There was no need to be hungry, with plenty of gold and silver in hand, and no risk of being beheaded by Donglu on the battlefield. The journey was relatively easy. Wu Cheng and others were worried that the court would not dare to chase fugitives into the city, and they returned home eager. Apart from occasionally finding a village to buy, they rushed all the way towards Shangxi. As they approached the border of Shangxi, the snow was getting heavier and heavier. One night, the snow was deep enough to reach people's ankles, and the cold wind was blowing straight into their bodies. When they reached the village, they couldn't see their fingers. Wu Cheng and his team could only find a dilapidated shelter to temporarily camp in, and then set off on the road after the heavy snow. The river next to it has frozen. The boy who went out to explore the terrain ran back, his face covered in frost. The snow is too deep 
I didn't dare to walk far, so I walked by the river. The river is so frozen that we should be able to cross it directly from the ice. Wu Qing nodded and handed him a bowl of hot pork soup. In the Ming dynasty, pork farming and harvesting techniques were backward, and there was no cross-breeding and improvement with foreign pigs like in later generations. Pork had a strong and unpleasant odor, but compared to other meats, it was cheaper. Wu Cheng and his team bought a lot of it as a meat reserve. The little boy, regardless of the taste, took two sips and squeezed into the fire, leaning tightly against the huge body of the long crane, as if wanting to warm himself. It is said that a good year of snow signifies a good harvest, but in recent years, the snow has been getting heavier and heavier. Sometimes it still snows in June, and the crops freeze to death. How can there be a good harvest? Mian Zhengyu sighed and sprinkled salt into the pork soup, then suddenly grinned again. Anyway, we can have a good harvest this year, but unfortunately, the heavy snow has blocked the way. Otherwise, it would be a good omen for us to enter the Shangxi border on New Year's Day. Everyone laughed heartily, and Yu Gong interjected, in recent years, the court has been owing salaries year by year, and the family has been struggling to make a living. On New Year's Day, we can only give the children a red rope as a gift. This year, when we go back, we must buy them some new clothes and have a good new year. Mayan Change stuffed his mouth full and said with a hint of confusion, I don't want clothes, I'll buy food. I'll go to the city and cut two pounds of beef. Beef is precious, and I haven't tasted what beef tastes like yet. Eat and eat, you know how to eat. Don't be greedy for cheap and buy their privately slaughtered oxen, and the trouble will come to us. Mian Zhengyu slapped Mian Changhe's forehead with a resentful slap, sighing softly. Six children should also start their education in two years. I need to save some money for him to attend a private school. In the future, he will become a scholar and not have to suffer from the hardships of joining the army anymore. Everyone fell silent for a moment, and the little boy sneezed and turned his head to ask, Brother Cheng, what are you going to do with these gold and silver? Buy some fields, do some business, buy some weapons. Wu Qing replied with his knees crossed, the Donglu broke down the Great Wall and plundered the capital. There were hundreds of thousands of troops left in the capital that could not be stopped. Will the Donglu keep such a piece of fat and not bite? Sooner or later, there will be a second or third time. The weather is getting colder, and most of the northern regions have poor or even no harvests. The court will only find it increasingly difficult. If we don't prepare early, sooner or later we will be trapped on the battlefield. After a moment of silence, Yu Gong sighed and said, Brother Wu is right, but our way is located at the foot of the Taihang Mountains, and most of the surrounding areas are farmland. If we want to buy farmland, we have to go to the vicinity of Taiyuan to do business. We also have to go to big cities like Taiyuan, or even go to Zhangjiago. But our capital is small, so we may not be able to buy too much farmland or do a lot of business. Mian Zhengyu nodded and agreed, ordnance is easy to deal with. Our guards have already run out of craftsmen, but I have relatives and friends in Datong town. Maybe I can buy some firearms from them. Wu Cheng sighed and smiled slightly, these are all later words. We have to go back to Shangxi to talk about it. New Year's Eve is coming in a few days. I hope we can arrive at the Shangxi border on New Year's Day. Everyone nodded loudly, pork soup paired with cold pancakes and garlic enjoying themselves. A group of people fell asleep when they were full, and soon snored one after another. However, Wu Qing did not sleep. He used a pile of fire to melt some snow water and rinsed his mouth. He also took out a cold towel and rolled it in the water, wiped his face, lifted the basin from the fire, took off his shoes and socks, and started soaking his feet. In this era, medical conditions are backward, and any minor illness can kill people. As long as conditions permit, Wu Qing still needs to pay attention to personal hygiene. In the snowy night, except for the howling wind, there was silence, as if all living beings were hiding from the cold wind and heavy snow, huddling in a warm place and falling asleep. 
Wu Cheng was closing his eyes and enjoying the warm water on his feet when suddenly a piercing scream came, followed by a faint and continuous scream, as if a woman was crying. Wu Cheng suddenly opened his eyes, and Mian Zhenyu beside him frowned and got up. He drew a small cut of his waist knife, and in no time, Yu Gong and Mao Hai also got up. The long crane was still sleeping like a dead pig, and most of the others were also sleeping soundly. Only a few of them, who were alert or experienced, heard this strange movement. Yu Gong's tense body slowly relaxed, but his right hand still tightly grasped the handle of the waist knife. We are in the downwind, and the wind brings the sound over. It sounds close, but the distance is actually not close. In such heavy snow and such a cold night, where did a woman make a big fuss? The little boy showed a frightened and fearful expression, and his tone trembled. Can't it be a female ghost? Ghost, you head. Where the lonely and wild ghosts dare to touch us Chioba who eat imperial food. Mian Zhengyu cursed and frowned as he looked at Wu Cheng, who was wearing shoes and socks. Shouting non dot stop, I'm afraid something happened. Should we go and take a look? Wu Qing nodded and asked the little boy to stay and watch, walking deep and shallow on the snow with Mian Zhengyu and Yu Gong towards the direction of the sound. After walking for a while, the sound became clearer and clearer, with flames flickering in the distance. Several figures were making noise in the ruins of a building. Wu Cheng and his companions exchanged a glance, pulled out their waist knives, and quickened their steps. However, they saw dozens of ragged men and women lurking in the ruins. Several thin and emaciated men were beating and cursing around a woman in her thirties, who tightly held on to something in her arms and occasionally let out screams of surprise. Wu Qing walked up first, holding a knife and shouting loudly, Who is that? Dare to bully women. Get out of here. The few men were startled and fled to the side in a disheveled manner, but did not escape. They surrounded a pottery pot on the fire and watched Wu Cheng and his companions with vigilance. Wu Cheng's nose twitched as he smelled a strong aroma of meat. He frowned and used the back of his knife to drive away these people, then inserted his knife into the pot and stirred up the meat soup. A boiled little hand floats onto noodles in soup.